What's up guys? It's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. Today we don't have a video. We have an Instagram post from docrob.holistic. I'm already triggered. It is a picture of pieces of steak on a fork and it is symptoms of protein poisoning. Brain fog, memory issues, joint pain, inflammation, bloating, foul smelling gas, abnormal body or vaginal odor, heartburn, GERD, or indigestion. So first off, vaginal odor from too much meat. Do I make a comment about going down on your significant other? Yeah, we're gonna do it. I don't wanna be putting my business out there too much, but you know, I haven't been with very many women, but just my uh, anecdotal report is that the vaginal smell does not appear to change uh, from, from dietary changes, at least based on what I've seen. And I certainly have not seen uh, any empirical evidence that the vaginal odor changes. I'm not even sure how that would work. Let's go back to the more generalized of this entire post. A lot of times people like this, who I haven't gone to his profile yet, but I will here in a second, and I'm quite sure he's probably a vegan. This goes for any nutritional zealot tribe. They'll lump together a bunch of really nebulous symptoms and say, oh, your thing is caused by that. I promise you, let's see here, brain fog. Yeah, I feel like I get brain fog every friggin' day. Memory issues. I got a pretty good memory. Joint pain, yep, I got joint pain. Inflammation, this one triggers the out of me more than any other one because you don't even know what inflammation is. You don't. People use it and they're like, oh, I have an ouchie, so I'm inflamed, or oh, my tummy hurts, so I'm inflamed. No, inflammation, because they're hearing the word flame and they think fire and they're like, oh, this hurts, it feels like fire. That must mean inflammation. No, you idiot. Inflammation can be assessed by markers in the bloodstream like CRP, IL-6, and others. And there was a study where they looked at high meat intake versus no meat intake, where they controlled calories and macros, kept them the same, and found absolutely no difference in inflammatory markers in that study. But a lot of people are like, they'll have some kind of GI response to the food they eat, mostly because a lot of you have probably sensitivities in terms of FODMAPs and those sorts of things and create gas, but you'll pick out one ingredient and be like, oh, it was the carbs or oh, it was the meat I ate. That's what made me have a tummy ache, which again is not inflammation. Now that I'm past that, like literally any person could go down this and be like, oh yeah, those, I, I have some of those. Okay, that's why they do it. It's like getting your palm red. They're gonna use really generalized things and, and be like, someone new come into your life recently? Like, oh yeah, I did meet that person at the gym the other day. I'm like, oh man, are you stupid? I just get a little frustrated because this post has 2,600 likes, including from some people I actually know. A page dedicated to people helping heal themselves and lose weight naturally. 25 years in practice and 30,000 patients. A thousand patients a year? Boy, you must be giving really individualized recommendations then, because a thousand in a year, over a thousand, that seems like a lot. I coached people for 15 years, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, online, where I did as much as I possibly could, and I coached just over 2,000 people in that entire period of time. So so my guess is this guy just gives everybody the same old generalized crap advice. Doesn't say he's a vegan, so maybe I got that one wrong. Let's just go to his page here. Oh God, free webinar, how to heal your gut and heal your body. A thyroid versus adrenal evaluation. 100% sure this guy is a naturopath. And there it is, doctor of traditional naturopathy and chiropractic, woo. Why am I not surprised? I think I'm gonna have a heart attack, I'm like Iago. I'm gonna have a heart attack and die of not surprise. There may be good naturopaths out there, but I have not found one yet. Now I have met some actual decent chiropractors who stay in their lane and actually care about the evidence so they're not like, hey, we're gonna like do an adjustment. It's gonna pop your spine back in alignment. They actually like focus on pain science and movement and whatnot, good for them, but many are complete and utter garbage. Every naturopath, and again, I'm sure there's one good one out there. If they exist, feel free to email me, but every naturopath I've ever come across is just like this, i.e. full of crap. Now that I'm done with the ad hominems, going back to all these things. Oh, so all these are crap. 
This is all crap. There's, there's no evidence that protein contributes to brain fog. Yeah, because there's so many papers that come out that are like p-value of 0 0.01 and an effect size of 0.8 on brain fog. That's not even an actual scientific term. Gullible people will believe it because they're like, yeah, you know, sometimes my brain feels foggy and it must be that steak I ate last night. What's funny is a lot of these like claims are also claimed by people in carnivore about vegetables and fruits and stuff. It's just, they all do the same thing. It's just, you know, change the face, but the show is the same. So let's go back to the uh, vaginal smells. How was that assessed is what I would like to know. Like, is this guy going around sniffing vaginas or what? Because I feel like that could be some kind of medical malpractice unless he's an OBGYN. My advice is this whole protein poisoning thing is BS doesn't exist, especially not the way he's describing. And I advise Dr. Rob, please stop smelling vaginas. No means no. Catch you guys next week.